Hi, my name is Babur Iqbal, and today I will be giving a presentation on Aaron Douglas, who was one of the main artistic leaders of the Harlem Renaissance in the 1920s and 30s, and is said to be the father of African American art. During the presentation, I will go over a biography of Douglas, including life events and experiences that influenced him to be the artist he was in his artistic style. Additionally, I will analyze two of his artwork and how they relate to color theory. Aaron Douglas was born on May 22, 1899 in Topeka, Kansas to Elizabeth and Aaron Douglas Sr. He had many siblings but stood out as he had a passion for education and art, which may have been rubbed off by his mother who was a landscape and genre painter. His parents supported his pursuit of higher education but sadly could not afford it. Therefore, Douglas took up an assembly line job in Detroit. However, this didn't stomp his creativity as he made many still life scenes and portraits while working at the factory. <coughs> Douglas decided to submit the art he created while working in Detroit to the art department at the University of Nebraska. He was admitted, which shows how much artistic talent he had to be let in without mm -hmm. an educational background or transcript. After graduating in 1922 and teaching for three years, Douglas decided to move to Harlem, New York in 1925 while the Harlem Renaissance was occurring. D. Du Bois, an author and editor of the NAACP, hired Douglas for his talent. Additionally, he became a student of the German artist Winold Rieses. During the Renaissance, Douglas was exposed to black poets, authors, artists, actors, and photographers. He also was taught European art styles such as Modernism and Cubism by Rees, who told Douglas to use his African ancestry as inspiration. All of these helped him mold his unique art style. He fused Modernism, Egyptian, and African art to depict African American life and struggle in his artwork. His unique art style landed him several awards and attracted the attention of many authors and magazines who wished to use him as their illustrator. Douglas began to create powerful illustrations for authors such as Du Bois, Langston Hughes, James Wilden Johnson, and many more. His more famous illustrations were used as book covers by Alan Leroy's book The New Negro and James Wilden Johnson's God's Trombones. Douglas went on to have a successful life both as an artist and educator. He continued to create art including making murals all over the U.S. and he became the head of the art department at Frisk University where he taught until 1966. On February 2, 1979, Douglas passed away. Moving away from his biography and on to his artworks, I will be focusing on how two of his art pieces relate to color theory, starting off with his work From Slavery Through Reconstruction, which he created in 1934. Douglas used colors in a variety of ways in this work. One was to create spatial depth via using tints, shades, lighter colors, and darker colors. Another way he used colors was to distinguish different groups by using contrasting colors while using monochromatic colors at the same time. Douglas made the slaves and African Americans all a dark shade of reddish brown, which puts them in the forefront. He did this to put emphasis on them while de-emphasizing other groups by using color. In the back, you can see Confederate and Union soldiers all a pale yellow color, which makes them blend into the background. Douglas uses color in this artwork to demonstrate what is important in black history, which is the experience of black people and what they went through, represented by the black people in the front, not the white people who negatively affected black people as they are being faded into the background, symbolizing how insignificant they are when it comes to the growth of black people. 
Additionally, he uses monochromatic color schemes in the artwork to distinguish different groups. As mentioned earlier, he made all the black people shades of reddish brown to bring a sense of unity between all of them, while he uses shades of yellow and greens to represent white people in Congress to create a contrast between the two groups. Moving on, I will be talking about the second artwork called Building More Stately Mansions that Douglas created in 1944. Once again, Douglas uses colors in a variety of ways to portray his deep messages about black people and society throughout history. Once again, he uses a monochromatic red color palette in this art piece, but uses different tints and shades of red. He places the dark red figures in the front while making the buildings in the back a lighter tint of red, thus creating the illusion of spatial depth in the art. Another way he uses color was by drawing emphasis to a particular object by creating rings of white around it. The object appears to be a globe which has a significant meaning to the painting as Douglas used colors to draw emphasis on it. Many people can interpret the meaning of the globe in different ways. For example, in my interpretation, the globe and monuments of buildings in the background all come together to portray Douglas' message of how black people created amazing architectural buildings like the Sphinx, pyramids, and skyscrapers all over the world. Finishing up, I'd like to give a brief overview of Aaron Douglas. He was one of the most impactful and successful black artists during the Harlem Renaissance and in his lifetime. His powerful art was always used to portray the vital history of black people and to uplift black people as a whole.